A nursery school teacher named Jenny Greengrass works at the local daycare and is fond of kids. She has a boyfriend named Steve Taylor. While waiting for her to end class, he looks at the ring he plans to propose to her inside his car. They excitedly plan on having a trip to the countryside, where Steve plans to have a romantic proposal. The drive is long, and the sun even sets before they could arrive. Steve is unsure of the way, making him rely on the GPS. Before arriving at a pub, they notice that the locals do not practice proper road etiquette and are rude. The following day, they arrive at Eden Lake, a gated community in the middle of the woods. The place used to be a public park before real estate took over. Deeper into the woods, Steve and Jenny finally see a majestic view overlooking the whole town. They grab their bags to find a spot where they could chill. A young and timid boy named Adam gathers insects, and Jenny approaches him to say hello. However, the boy is reluctant to talk to them because they are strangers, so they continue to look for the lake. The couple arrives at a serene lake, where they plan on having a good time. They bask in the sun while cuddling with each other. Not long after, two boys arrive to drive Adam away, who is also by the lake. Jenny feels sorry for Adam after being bullied by his peers, given that she is also a teacher. She closes her eyes to take a nap while basking in the sun when a Rottweiler barks at her. Jenny gets frightened by the sight of the big and unfriendly dog, which is at a dangerous distance from her. Their relaxation is disrupted because of the delinquent teenagers that have overtaken their peaceful spot. When Steve goes for a dip, the dog barks at Jenny once again, so he confronts the teenagers about it. He asks the group to turn their music down, but they refuse to do so. Instead, their leader, Brett, disrespectfully claps words back. Other members are Cooper, Reese, Ricky, Harry, and Paige. Steve stubbornly decides that he would stay put, and during their loud music and obnoxious dog, then be bullied by them into leaving. One of them even checks Jenny out using binoculars, so she covers herself out of being uncomfortable. Before the unruly teenagers leave, Brett flashes his private parts. Steve sets up the tent while Jenny gathers wood for their overnight stay. She hears rustling noises from a distance, but disregards them. The couple enjoys their time in the campfire that night, but Jenny still notices the sound coming from the woods. She lets Steve know about it, but he assures her that it's nothing to be concerned about. While having an intimate moment together, the noises still bother Jenny, so Steve goes outside to look. After some time, he stops answering Jenny's calls which makes her a bit scared, but Steve just plays a prank on her. In the morning, they realize that insects have infested their food, and they have no choice but to grab food someplace else. Upon leaving, Steve runs over an empty bottle that the teenagers left behind, but he manages to fix the tire, and they now set off for town. When they arrive, the teenagers pass in front of them on their bikes. A bit annoyed, Steve loses his cool, so he tries to follow them but is unable to keep up. They visit the diner where Steve asks the waitress about the group of kids, but she only laughs at them. He asks if she knows the parents of the kids by any chance, but she gets strangely defensive and says, Not my kids. After their breakfast, Steve spots several bicycles outside a house and thinks it belongs to the teenagers. Curiously, he stops the car, and Jenny pleads with him not to make the situation worse as it is not worth it. However, he is determined to teach the kids a lesson. Hello? The house is open, so he enters uninvited to check if anyone is home. In a matter of minutes, the owner arrives, who also happens to be Brett's father. He gets into a foul mood after calling for his son, thinking that he is inside the room. Steve manages to narrowly escape through the window before the owner sees him. He hurries to the car, and Jenny drives back to the lake after the thrilling incident. They swim together in the lake, and Steve decides to go scuba diving while Jenny sleeps on the shore. When he gets back, finding the perfect time to propose to Jenny, they realize that their bag containing their phone, wallet, and car keys is missing. They hurriedly run to the car and find out that it's gone. Without any choice, the couple decides to walk to town on foot. Steve becomes more agitated as they walk farther, with a growing desire for revenge. They avoid collision with their car as the group drives it recklessly in the woods. Brett stops for a brief second, only to smirk at the couple.
At night, they see the group by a campfire unsupervised by any adults. Steve approaches to demand the return of their belongings, but they deny having any idea of their whereabouts. In a timely manner, Steve hears his ringtone, which is the moment he loses his cool. He attacks Brett, but the other knife-wielding members bring him down. During the brawl, Brett's dog gets mortally knifed. Brett throws the keys while grieving the death of his dog. Jenny grabs the keys, and they run to the car. The group decides to run after them and throw rocks at the car, which stops because of a slope. Get her! The group approaches the vehicle to attack the couple. They break the lights and the windows, but Steve manages to drive away. The darkness and the unclear driveway cause the car to crash into a pile of woods. Steve gets trapped because of a branch. Jenny tries to help him but is unable to move it. Jenny is forced to run for help because of Steve's injuries and entrapment. She hides upon hearing the group and spends the night there. Meanwhile, Brett tracks down Steve and forces himself inside the car by breaking the window. At daybreak, Jenny sees Steve's shoes, suspecting that he is in danger. She is highly concerned about her boyfriend. She follows the tracks and finds him tied with barbed wire, all bloody and injured. She panics as help is far away, and the signal is terrible. Brett and his friends are responsible for torturing her boyfriend. Steve begs the kids to let him go, but Brett is insistent on getting revenge for his dog. Harry attempts to calm Brett and encourage him to let Steve go, but he only receives a sermon from their leader. Brett commands to put some cuts on Steve as Paige documents the torturous moment. The group takes turns inflicting harm on Steve, causing more wounds on him. Jenny watches the whole incident and is helplessly crying as she hides. She realizes that they are about to kill him, so she uses the Bluetooth on her GPS to connect with Steve's phone. She calls 911 to get help, but Brett notices and gets under the impression that Jenny must be close by. It allows Jenny to reveal herself and let the group chase her while Steve has the chance to free himself despite the pain. The teenagers ride their bikes through the forest chasing her, but she manages to evade them by using a log to make their bikes crash. She gets away and runs to Steve's rescue when she comes across a small mobile home. A radio phone lies inside the home, but it is too out of her reach. She struggles to reach for it as the teenagers get to the place as well. Without any present hiding place, Jenny manages to climb to the roof and hide before one of the members could get a hold of her. Ricky goes back to where they tied Steve and is surprised to know that he had fled. He informs Brett, so the group is on the run again, but this time, to look for Steve. As Steve opens the car door, the safety alarm goes off, causing a noise loud enough for everyone to hear. Alerted by the sound, the group finds out that one of their targets is near the car. Jenny finally reunites with Steve after almost being hit by him, thinking that she is one of the members. She helps Steve run as far as they could, but his wounds look fatal. They end up in a small cabin where she attempts to nurse his injury but he is sure that his wounds will be the end of him. While attending to Steve's wounds, Jenny finds an engagement ring. Meanwhile, the group tracks down the cabin, and as they open it, they only see the first aid kit with Steve's blood all over the place. Jenny manages to hide under the cabin, submerged in water. She holds Steve, who is now in a very critical condition, hearing the teenagers come up with a plan to get them. After the group flees, she drags Steve's body on land, where she lays him down. Jenny dramatically says yes to his proposal before running for help. She accidentally steps on a big spike. She screams because of the extreme pain and catches the group's attention. She crawls to a hidden space to remove the spike that is deep on her foot, but she has no choice but to endure the pain. She lays down for a second to regain her strength when she sees someone standing by. Adam finds her and decides to walk with her to safety. Jenny tries to borrow Adam's phone, but he refuses to lend it to her despite her desperate pleas. It reveals that Adam's intention to help is completely the opposite. He has texted the group of their whereabouts, putting Jenny in great danger. One of the members knocks her unconscious. Jenny wakes up in horror, seeing herself tied to a tree beside Steve's lifeless body. They plan on burning them, 
but some of the members are hesitant about doing so. Jenny's fears are coming closer, leaving her without any course of action. Brett forces Adam to light a match and throw it onto the tree drenched in gasoline. According to Brett, Adam will be accepted in the group when he lights them on fire. Tired of feeling left out and bullied, he follows their condition. Steve's body is burned first, while Paige films it. In a sinister way, Brett gets giddy at the sight of it and jumps in celebration. Adam tries to flee the scene, but the members get a hold of him at that instant. Because of the fire, the rope tied to Jenny slowly burns. This gives her a perfect chance to run away. Brett tries to get to her, but she holds a torch against him. She pours over the gasoline and burns the ground to stop Brett from running after her. Adam is used as bait for Jenny to come back, but she ignores his cries for help. Upon running further, she witnesses Adam being burned alive by Brett and his group. Jenny continuously finds her way out with a trail map after breaking a glass that secures it. As she hears the group come near, she hides in a trash bin despite the disgusting smell. She endures the unpleasant scent for the sake of survival. She sees two members outside, looking for any signs of her, but they eventually go away. Jenny exits the bin and gets a piece of broken glass for self-defense. She sees Cooper from a mirror and stabs him on the neck. As he bleeds to death, Jenny holds him, realizing that Cooper was attempting to help her escape. Regret fills her mind. Never in her life did she think that she could harm anyone, much more a kid. That night, the group finds Cooper's lifeless body, which triggers them to seek vengeance even more. The sight of it throws Brett into more rage, as Harry cries beside Cooper and blames their leader for everything. He begins to call someone on his phone, prompting Brett to beat him despite his cries, and he eventually dies brutally. Paige runs off, terrified by Brett's seemingly uncontrollable behavior. Meanwhile, Jenny finally reaches the road, where a car passes by. She stops in the middle and begs the driver to let her in, so he does. Jenny finds out that the driver is actually the brother of Ricky, who is one of the members. Get ready. Will. Damn two tips, yeah? Please stop. Please stop. She panics and steals the van while he calls for Ricky. In a fit of vengeful rage, she runs over Paige intentionally without any remorse, causing the teenage girl to die. To avoid collision with another car, she makes a turn and ends up crashing the van into a fence at a backyard party and collapses after asking for help. Jenny gains consciousness and sees middle-aged strangers comforting her. She realizes that she is in Brett's house after seeing his childhood pictures on the wall. Unfortunately, the people in the room are also the parents of the members of the group who terrorized her and Steve. To escape from being around them, Jenny goes to the bathroom after saying that she feels sick. Meanwhile, a commotion is happening outside after the parents recognize the van that Jenny crashed. In case of anything bad, she gets a hold of a razor while Brett's father forces her to open the door. She just stands back, causing the parent to kick the door open. She sees Brett outside the door before one parent attacks her. The kids have convinced the parents that Jenny and Steve are responsible for the death of some of the members. Jenny begs them to call the police, but they all plan to make her pay for what happened. Brett's father commands him to go upstairs while they deal with Jenny who is now fearful for her life. Jenny realizes that the group's parents are just as psychotic and murderous as their kids, and they protect them from prosecution. She gets dragged outside by the parents while Brett closes his room to block her screams. He smirks at himself in the mirror before putting on Steve's sunglasses. He then continues to delete the footage from Paige's phone to hide any evidence. What was supposed to be a happy trip ended up in a tragic event, as the two lovers never even started their journey to marriage. So what do you think about this movie? If you like it, please click like and leave a comment for this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a video from Thriller Recap. See you next video.